Salutations, friends. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm doing a quick review. I'm gonna try and make this as quick as possible. From Dixic and Zach, we are talking about the Nightingale. This is a house and a fragrance I have never mentioned before, but I am dang excited to review this fragrance for you guys. So if you'd like to know what I think, then keep watching. First things first, this was a purchase. This was one of my birthday presents to myself. And if you guys remember my last Q&A video, I talked about a fragrance that I would keep getting samples of from Lucky Scent and I finally purchased a bottle. It's this one. I think the past like eight months, a little less than a year, anytime I did a Lucky Scent order, I would like order or buy or request at least one or two of these samples. I love it. There are a lot of notes in this fragrance. I'm not going to focus on the entire list of notes because that this video will be way too long. But first, I wanted you just guys to know if you love jasmine, if you like animalic fragrances, if you like woody scents, if you like challenging but wearable scents, if you're looking for a more masculine leaning floral fragrance, uh, hello to the nightingale. This is gorgeous. 100 ml of this beautiful fragrance is $225. It is expensive, but in my opinion, not overpriced. It is beautiful. This fragrance will not be for everyone, specifically because it has a very beautiful base of civet, patchouli, cedarwood, sandalwood. There's some vanilla and myrrh in there, as well as some vetiver. And you really get the woody civet <laughs> and the patchouli in there as well. When I say woody, I mean the woods and the civet and the patchouli. The vanilla kind of softens and creams everything out, but you're getting a, a patchouli civet base. It's animalic, it's a little bit funky, but done in a way that is not unpalatable. It's very wearable. It's not intimidating. It is a little bit challenging, but it is very sexy and bold. Now, that doesn't mean that this fragrance is an animalic woody fragrance. No, it is a jasmine I love the jasmine. There's a variety of different jasmines in here. I'm going to list all the, the ingredients notes below because there's a lot. But it opens up with some beautiful citruses, specifically bergamot. I love the bergamot in this. And I like that aside from a different variety of jasmines, specifically jasmine sandbag, which is one of my favorites, you also have some beautiful aromatic um, florals in here. So there's orange blossom in here, which in my opinion is used as more of an aromatic with lavender and rose. There's some holy basil in here too. Everything comes together to create this really complex and beautiful jasmine fragrance that is incredibly transportive and bold and powerful and sexy, but not in your usual, like, this is what I would expect a night blooming jasmine fragrance to smell like. Now, if you guys know me, you know my love of jasmine. In fact, my thousandth bottle, I basically uh, created, not created, but commissioned another bespoke fragrance from Dominique de Brana. Um, it's basically a night blooming jasmine fragrance. And I talked about Jasmine Sombach and how I wanted the, that particular Jasmine. And the reason why I love Jasmine Sombach is it's one of those Jasmines that is slightly dirtier, can be a little bit animalic, it's muskier, a little bit more masculine, and it can just smell otherworldly. And what I like about the Nightingale is that it is all the challenging aspects of Jasmine Sandbuck are celebrated in a way that are beautiful and wearable and it's just, it's gorgeous. Now this style of fragrance is not new. That You've probably smelled this before, but what I like is the fact that it's done really gorgeously and almost nearly perfectly in the Nightingale. So it's gonna open specifically on my skin, I get a lot of bergamot. It's very sparkly. It also comes off slightly waxy, a little waxy, just a little bit, just for the first like two to three minutes. And then it softens to jasmine. Hello, here we are. We're taking you on a trip through some warm, kind of almost dry, arid area with just night blooming jasmine everywhere. And I love that because it's very dry and dense and warm, but not in a bad way. It's almost idealistic. Like maybe you grew up someplace that had warm summer nights 
and you just remember waking up in the middle of the night and just everything smelling amazing and it being super hot, but you just being comfortable and it just being transportive and idealistic and amazing. What I like is the jasmine is always front and center, but it is not taking over the fragrance. What I get a lot of is this kind of conflicting almost battle in the background between the patchouli and the civet and the woods. And what that does is it creates a lot of beautiful complexity that the jasmine kind of bounces off of. And that's what really balances the more intimidating parts of the jasmine to sambuck that a lot of people try to tame. Maybe the dirtier aspects of it, the more raw aspects of it, the more animalic, muskier aspects of it. And it really takes it and it makes it something bolder and sexier and powerful and it just makes it smell great. If you do not like enamolic fragrances, like if civic is something that you run away from, this isn't a dominant civet note, but it is present. You can smell it start to finish. So I would probably say, I mean, even if you love civet, definitely sample this first. But if you are intimidated or you don't like those styles of enamolic fragrances, this won't be the fragrance for you. If you are looking for a transportive, magical, mystical jasmine fragrance, I wouldn't even say this is that. When I think of this fragrance, this almost feels like a more realistic transport of fragrance. Like it's taking you someplace that you might not have been before, but feels very familiar. The patchouli is very grounding. The woods in here are very deliberate. The specific florals are adding a lot of emphasis to specific parts of the jasmine and taming specific parts of the base. And at the end of the day, this is something that smells very beautiful and very deliberate, and that's what I enjoy. And it's just as a jasmine lover, as somebody that loves animalic fragrances, loves woody fragrances, loves challenging on the slightly more avant-garde sense, the nightingale is just beautiful. Now, when I say challenging, it's because animalic scents and more dirtier jasmines can be not so common, not so familiar for a lot of people, specifically people who have a lot more familiarity with more Western style perfumery. Uh, so that's what I'm saying with challenging. That doesn't mean this is a hard to wear fragrance. It's just a little bit bolder and the style isn't so kind of like going into a Macy's, which you would smell. But that doesn't mean that this isn't beautiful and this doesn't mean that this smells like a barnyard. It doesn't. There's no like ammonia aspects to the animalic notes in here. It's a little bit more musky, a little bit more deep, a little bit more earthy and grounding. And I like how the woody elements soften specific things about this too. But front and center, you're gonna get like a woody, very, 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 very kind of dirty jasmine at the top. And that's what makes this a little bit more challenging than any of the other aspects of it is because I don't think people quite expect that type of jasmine. I think when people see jasmine and rose and orange blossom and sandalwood and little cedarwood and vanilla, they might expect something creamy. They might expect something soft. They might expect a little bit of an edge maybe from the patchouli and the civet, but it doesn't go that way. This is definitely more of a woody patchouli civet base that is very bold and very powerful that it's lending those nuances that all of those beautiful notes have to really celebrate the more challenging, the more tamed aspects of a night blooming jasmine fragrance. And I love seeing that side of this kind of beautiful flower uh, celebrated. And that's why I really love this scent. So that is my review of the Nightingale. It's a beautiful fragrance, absolutely gorgeous. It is not a new composition. It's definitely a style of fragrance you've smelled before, but if you are looking for a masculine or more shared leaning jasmine scent, especially one that's bold and sexy and a little bit different, again, with that animalic note of civet in there and the patchouli being very present, I think this is definitely worth checking out. This is a house that everything I've tried, I've loved. 
and I've been meaning to add a few other fragrances from this house to my collection, so I will definitely be adding a few more. And it's just really gorgeous, and I absolutely love it. But definitely sample it first. It's not a safe blind buy at all, but really gorgeous fragrance from a really uh, underappreciated house. So that is my review of the Nightingale. I hope you enjoyed this fragrance, uh, this fragrance, this review. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys are all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I will see you next time.